بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد We have to make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has given us deen that teaches us everything to the last minute detail. The shukr of this is to go to those people who have been favored with the inheritance of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. Deen is a means of salvation in dunya and akhirah. We need to go to the experts to understand, to learn, to practice and to see that this comes alive in the whole of mankind. Even when doing good, ulama have given us detail how it should be done, what emotion, what sifat, what qualities etc. To the last, last detail. The maqula of ulama, لا تفرح بالطاعة لأنها ظهرت منك even though you are doing excessive amal, you are doing a lot of good deeds, don't be elated and gratified by the fact that you are doing that action, that it had emanated and originated from you. Don't be contented with that. But, walakin ifrah bitta'a. But be happy with the obedience that you are going, doing لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ جَعَلَكَ لَهَا أَهْلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had selected, chosen and designated you as the one to do that action. The fact that Allah commissioned me to do this good deed. I have been chosen by Allah to do this good deed. That's what I should be happy about. So this good is from Allah. The fact that He chose me should make me more happy that I did this good deed. So we have to get, get the balance right. No matter where we are, on what scale, Allah and His Rasul have given us directives which we need to follow. Whether it's in obedience, whether it's in disobedience. But thus, we have to learn from the ulama. As the Mashaikh have said, that أَكْثَرُ مَا يُهْلِكُ الصَّالِحُونَ أَكْثَرُ مَا يُهْلِكْ The one that uh, destroyed uh, the, 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 the pious, those actions which have destroyed the pious is اِخْتِرَارَهُمْ بِالطَّاعَاتِ So what has deceived the pious and have put them in a deception is their piety, is their good deeds. أَكْثَرُ مَا يُهْلِكُ الصَّالِحِينَ اِخْتِرَارَهُمْ بِالطَّاعَاتِ وَأَكْثَرُ مَا يُهْلِكُ الْمُقَصَّرِينَ اِحْتِقَارَهُمْ لِلْمَعَاسِ And what has destroyed the sinners, what has destroyed the disobedient servants of Allah is the insignificance of the sin that they are committing. وَمَنْ عَرَفَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ الْمَعْرِفَةِ Whoever recognizes Allah how they should have recognized Allah لَمْ يَسْتَكْثِرْ مِنْ طَاعَةٍ They will not be consider their good deeds to be significant وَلَمْ يَحْتَقِرْ صَغِيرَةً They will not consider sins to be small So the fact that you are doing good they can be destruction the fact that a person is doing a sin, there can be destruction. So whatever person considers to be important, it may be very insignificant. We need to look what does Allah want from us. So we have to look everything in life with the eye of Allah and His Rasul. And that should be our focus. The Hukama, the wise people, you say, لَيْسَ الْبُكَى عَلَى النَّفْسِ إِنْ مَاتَتْ That if you want to cry and you want to grieve, then somebody close, your beloved, your loved one dies, you are deprived of their company. That's not a cause of crying more than وَإِنَّمَا حَقُّ الْبُكَى عَلَى التَّوْبَ إِنْ فَاتَتْ That the fact that a person was deprived of repentance and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's more of a concern than being deprived of the company of your loved one. So the mizaj and the mindset of Allah and His Rasul. When you have an interview for a job, how nervous a person is, then they go in for travel, the embassy calls you for a visa, how nervous you become. 
the, the receiver of revenue is auditing you. How nervous. You understand and you have been interviewed. The judge, the court. So based on the wrongs, a person will be more stressed. How much grief, how much anxiety do we have when we know that Allah will interview us? And the fact that I am contented and that concern of standing before Allah is not overwhelming is a concern. So ulama say, لِلْعَبْدِ وَقْفَتَان There's two occasions where you will stand before Allah. وَقْفَةُ الصَّلَاءُ وَوَقْفَةُ الْقِيَامَةُ One is you'll stand in front of Allah in every uh, salah. We are standing in front of Allah. And the grandstand on the day of Qiyamah. فَأَحْسِنْ فِي الْأُولَى Make sure you perfect the first standing. Perfect your salah. Your second one will be easy. Your second one will be easy. So we need to look from the view of Allah and His Rasul. We wonder, okay, this person is so intelligent, he's got this IQ. What Nabi Al Islam has said, Al Kaisu Mandana Nafsa, controlling your nafs and preparing for death, preparing for akhirah. He's an intelligent person. So nowadays people are worried about their diets, their eating habits, their particular. Why? We want to look good for others. But we can't control our nafs to look good in front of Allah. We can't control our nafs to look good in front of Allah. This is what Hassan Basri rahimahullah used to say. Al-mu'minu al-kaysu al-fatin. A wise, intelligent, brilliant believer is kullama zadahu Allah ihsanan izdada minhu khawfan. The more Allah favors you, the more you fear. Allah favors you with dunya, you fear, should I not use it in the wrong? Allah will be unhappy. Allah will snatch that away and everything that else, else that I had. And that's a small benefit, dunya. Allah increase me in deen, in, in, in the sobat in company of the ulama, in, in listening to the adhan, in having copies of the Qur'an, physical copies, having ulama qurra to teach us tajweed and masail. I was ungrateful. I had the opportunity to go out in the path of Allah. I was ungrateful. The Jama'at came and made my tashkil. That was a bounty and ni'mat. It was ihsan from Allah. And I disengage. Should not be Allah will deprive me. So our fear should increase. So there's a point of taqwa and the 22nd benefit for the muttaqeen. وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ The gardens the Jannah will be brought near to the one who guards against evil and sin. Jannah will be brought close for the Muttaqeen. So Anas bin Malik says that my uncle Anas bin Nadar narrates the incident that uh, he said, Ya Nabi of Allah, I was not uh, available, to, I did not partake in, in the battle of Badr and on this opportunity I will show you what? I will show Allah and His Rasul. I will show Allah and His Rasul what I can do. So when the battle of Uhud came, he said, Allahumma inni a'tadhiru ilayka mimma sana'a ha'ula. Ya Allah, please, I excuse my companions of what has transpired. And he went forward and he met Hazrat Sa'ad bin Mu'adh and he said Al-Jannah I can see as if I Jannah on the Qasam of the Rabb of the Kaaba Inni ajidu riha min duni Uhud I can perceive the fragrance of Jannah beyond Uhud so Sa'ad said that uh, he, he, he went full-fledged into the battle and uh, even Saad said, I could not do what he did, Ya Rasulullah. فَمَا اسْتَطَعْتُ Ya Rasulullah مَا سَنَا So Anas Radiyan says, we found plus 70 different injuries on his body. Whether it was spears, whether it was arrows, whether it was cuts from the swords. And uh, nobody could recognize him except his sister who could recognize his fingertips. Nobody could recognize him except his sister who recognized him by his fingertips. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows his friends Jannah in this world. Allah shows them Jannah in this world. Abdul Wahid narrates that one day we were gathering to make preparations for jihad, striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jamaat was getting ready, wustudi was happening. Wherever they had their bags ready, they were bringing their bags to the masjid and we were getting ready to leave in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to arouse the spirit of going out in the path of Allah, somebody read the ayah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَمْ وَمَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ The last bought Jannah in exchange for your wealth and yourselves, your lives. So a 15 year old boy stood up and uh, his father had left him a substantial estate, a considerable estate. And he said, يَا عَبْدَ الْوَاحِدِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَمْ وَمَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Is this true? So I said, نَعَمْ يَا حَبِيبِ Definitely. So he said, Inni ushiduka anni kad ba'tu nafsi wa mali bi anna li al jannah. I am completed, I'm completing the transaction. My wealth, my life is for Allah. So I told him, Inna hadda saif ashad min dhalika. The sharpness of the sword is more difficult than you perceive. And inni akhafu alla tasbir. I'm afraid that you will not be able to remain steadfast and be patient because there is the forefront, the battlefield has extreme difficulties. So he replied, Ya Abd al Wahid, Allah bil Jannah thumma a'ajiz. Is it possible that I did a transaction with Allah and I cancel the contract of sale? I bear witness, Qad bayatuhu. I've sold myself to Allah. I've done the transaction. So Abdul Wahid says, فَتَقَاسَرَتْ إِلَيْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَقُلْنَا That seeing this determination and vigor of the child, we felt ashamed that a small youngster has understood what Allah has requirements, the requirements and the taqazas of deen and we can't فَخَرَجَ مِنْ مَالِهِ He took out all his wealth, he gave it وَتَسَدَّقَ بِهِ So everything he gave out, he got ready to join the expedition, the date was earmarked and the only thing he kept was his horse, his weapons and the money, the amount needed for the journey. So the day came when we were going to leave and he was the first person there ready and he said As-salamu alayka ya abd al-wahid فَقُلْتُ وَعَلَيْكَ السَّلَامُ I, I replied and I said, what a profitable transaction, what a profitable deal. And this boy was very phenomenal, his condition was amazing. يَسُمُ النَّهَارُ وَيَقُومُ اللَّيْلِ He used to fast the entire day, make a bad day, entire night. He would make our khidmah, he was in khidmah, he was fasting, he was in ibadat, he was in da'wat, he was in ta'aleem, he was in all the amal. He would tend to our animals, he would stand on security. He took all the responsibilities, etc. and we reached the Roman, the Roman border. فَبَيْنَا نَحْنُ كَذَلِكَ إِذْ بِهِ قَدْ عَقْبَلَ وَهُوَ يُنَادِي So one day he came and he started rushing and he was overwhelmed and he was saying وَشَوْقَا إِلَى الْعَيْنَا الْمَرْضِيَةِ That uh, he began screaming in an unusual manner and he said that my desire, my ambition وَضَعَ عَيْنَا الْمَرْضِيَةِ those hoors who are wide-eyed and they will make you happy. We are going with the hoors of the world which is challenging and the hoors of Ain. So when they heard this they said لَأَلَّهُ وَسْوَسَ has, has he lost his senses? اِخْتَلَطَ أَقْلُهُ has, has, has he become insane? So I said, Habibi, wa ma hadhi al-ayna? What are these words you're talking about? He said that I went to go sleep and I seen somebody approaching me. Fahajaba bi, they took me to uh, a, a garden and I seen, idhab ila, let's go to the ayna al mardiya the wide-eyed beautiful damsels who will please a husband. They will make the husbands elated, overjoyed. They will take you to the climax of enjoyment. And وَعَلَى شَدِّ النَّهْرِ جِوَارَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنَ الْحُلَلِ وَالْحُلَى مَا لَا أَقْدِرُ أَنْ أَسِفَهُ They were all adorned with jewelry, were dressed in such apparels, the beauty of which I cannot describe. 
I was dazzled by their beauty. I was mesmerized. I was awestruck. These, this, this is the appearance that I see in these damsels. I was taken aback. So when they seen me, they welcomed me, they smiled, and they said, Hada zawjul ayna al -mardiya. This is the, 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 the husband of the ayna al -mardiya. So I said, Assalamu alaykunna fi kunna al ayna al -mardiya. Is the ayna al-mardiya ya? So he said, no, you got it wrong. We're not ayna al-mardiya. Nahnu khadmuha wa imauha. That we are just a servant and a slave. Getting informed from Allah to Amami, I continued traveling and there was another stream, Laban, Lame Takhir Ta'ama. So the first stream was of pure water. The second one was of pure milk. And there was gardens of every time of beautifications. And there was damsels again. And I seen them. I was hypnotized by their beauty. I was, I was charmed. When I looked at them, I was riveted and gripped. I became immersed in the beauty of light and endowed them with. So when they seen me again, they, they, they smiled, they were happy, they welcomed me. They said, this is the husband of the Ayn al-Mardiyah. I said, Assalamu alaykunna. Is Ayn al-Mardiyah ya? They said, uh, Wa alayka salam ya wali Allah. No, you got it wrong. They declined. Nahnu khadmuha. We are her servants. We just here to serve her. But carry on forward. forward. I carry on. And there is a stream min khamrin ladhati li sharibin that uh, of pure wine, pure alcohol that uh, gave ecstasy to the drinkers. And uh, when I seen those damsels, I got amnesia. I forgot the beauties that I seen before that. They were so beautiful that I became spellbound, captivated, so passionate about their beauty that I got amnesia automatically. I got amnesia on their beauty. So uh, I said, Assalamu alaykunna fikunna. Any ayna al mardiya ya? They said, decline. Oh, sorry, we are servants carrying forward. Then I came to another stream of asal honey pure, and they were wools on that side, min uh, nur wal jamal, such nur and beauty that they surpassed the previous ones. So I said, Assalamu alaykum. Say al mardiya ya. And they replied, Ya wali Allah, nahnu khadmuha wa imawa. We just are servants. We are age. We just have to work. Carry on forward. So I carried on. And for for wasal to ila khaymatim min durwatim bayda, I came to a extremely beautiful palace made of a a a a pearl, a single pearl which was hollowed. And ala babil khaymati, on the door of that structure, that palace, there was a hur. I cannot describe. I told you what the previous ones were, but I cannot describe you because I was. I was, I was intrigued and I was enticed by her beauty. I got caught. I thought, hey, you know what, here's it. When she seen me, she smiled, she welcomed me, and uh, she, she screamed, وَنَادَدْ قَدْ قَدِيمًا She screamed and she said, she was addressing somebody, oh, أَيْنَ الْمَرْضِيَ this is your husband had come. I got close to it in anticipation. وَدَخَلْتُ فَإِيَا هِيَا فَإِذَا هِيَا قَائِدَةٌ عَلَى سَرِيرٍ مِّن ذَهَبٍ مُكَلَّلٍ I, I seen her sitting on a gold studded bed. Uh, a, a bed made of pure gold studded with pearls, emeralds and rubies. فَلَمَّا رَأَيْتُهَا إِفْتَتَنْتُ بِهَا When I seen her, I became enchanted, I became enamored. I was fascinated, I was floored, I was infatuated. She was irresistible and she said in a beautiful voice, مَرْحَبًا بِكَ يَا وَلِيَ الرَّحْمَانِ كَدَّنَا لَكَ الْقُدُومُ عَلَيْنَا Oh, the friend of Rahman, your time has come, your time has come soon. We will meet for the hub too. So I can hug her. I grabbed her. I was getting close just to doing that. فقالت مهلاً. She said, oh, wait, 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 wait. A few seconds. Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you something. 
فإنه لم يأني لك أن تعانقني لأن فيك that the time has come you still have life in you you cannot touch me but وأنت تفطر الليلة عندنا إن شاء الله we will make iftar together tonight we will have supper together your time and my time is coming don't worry فَانْتَبَحْتُ يَا عَبْدَ الْوَاهِدِ وَلَا صَبْرَ لِي عَنْهَا So I woke up like that. Oh, Abdul Wahid is narrating the youngster. He was obsessed. He was very enthusiastic and eager. So he said, لَا صَبْرَ لِي How can I have patience? I'm excited. I'm eager. So he said, uh, Abdul Wahid is saying that while we were busy, the, the enemy attacked the battle rage. The, you, this youngster got into the battle. He demonstrated valor and bravery. And then I got the news of him being dropped. So we went to the body of the boy and uh, I counted nine enemies that he had killed. He was the tenth body there. And I seen him. Wahua, he was, blood was oozing out from his body. Wahua yadhaku. He was smiling and his face was full of smiles. Until he left this dunya. So he was smiling, he was, he was happy, and he left the dunya like that to have iftar supper. What is Aina al Mardiya? So the muttaqeen, those people who comply with the awamir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has prepared Jannah for them. Allah shows them sometimes the Jannah in this world, as the Shire says. Ya mayu aniqu dunya la baqa alaha Oh, the one who has embraced dunya. It's not going to terminate, it's going to come to an end, it's going to terminate. You embrace the one that will seize. Yumsi wa yusbih makhruran wa gharraran. This dunya is such that even if you hug it, it's going to betray you and double cross you. Look at the world morning and evening. Alla tarakta mina dunya mu'aniqatan. When will you abandon dunya? حَتَّى تُعَانِكَ فِي الْفِرْدَوْسِ أَبْكَارًا And embrace the virgins of Jannatu al-Firdaus إِن كُنْتَ تَبْغِي جِنَانَ الْخُلِّ تَسْكُنُهَا If you want the eternal Jannah that you will remain فَيَنْبَغِي لَكَ أَلَّا تَأَمَنَ النَّارًا That you should not be satisfied and contented with the Jahannam and the conditions to come in the year after Prepare accordingly. May Allah give us to figure making amal wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.